same as 1 over what? <laughs> sine. Yay! So this is 1 over sine. Know your trig identities. Also, 1 plus tangent squared equals? Secant squared. And then this thing, what rule do we need to use to differentiate x to the fourth tangent x? Product rule, because it's a product of an x thing times a tangent of x thing. So product rule says original first is x to the fourth times the derivative of tangent is secant squared plus derivative of the first guy is 4x cubed times the original second is tangent x. And then that's really all you need to do. Ta -da. Done. Uh, a couple things. Delta mass. We got a new slate of delta mass this week, but not yet because I haven't made them yet. So make them later today. Uh, they're due next Monday. If you didn't do last week's delta mass, please don't forget to do this week's delta mass. Uh, make sure you demo them each week. And homework is due Wednesday because it's pretty substantial. There's a lot there, so I would recommend you don't put it off till tomorrow. Because that would be a mistake. Uh, so hopefully you started it over the weekend and do some more tonight and then do some more tomorrow so that it's not all, all of that at once. Um, I went through and took the problems that you have in the book that are like example problems and then some more problems from like the exercise set from which I choose the homework problems and... I uh, turned them into a packet for you guys so I don't have to write stuff up on the board, like all the words. So here you go. We're going to be in this packet for two days. And then if and when we exhaust these problems, I'll go online and find more. We're going to be doing related rates all week. I thought about when we'll have a quiz and it won't be this week. So your related rates <laughs> quiz will be sometime uh, next week. Probably Tuesday or Wednesday if I have to. I had to guess. One, two, three, four. I lost my physics folder. You lost your physics folder. For AP or AP or H2. Well, what? your exam's already over, right? No, it's tomorrow. That's tomorrow. Okay, well, that's. There's nothing important with it. I mean, at this point, do you really need your physics folder? No, nah. What? Oh yeah, that's that's my class. Yeah, so they're doing that right now. So I went downstairs, gave them cookies this morning before their test. No. Yeah, I've got I got cookies in that duffel bag right there for them for after the test also. I made uh, like 60 cookies last night with my daughter and my aunt. Uh, and, uh, well, we didn't eat all 60 cookies. We just made 60 cookies and then I brought them. Um, well, if you take an AP class with me, I'll make you cookies on the day of the AP exam. Really? Yeah. You see, you see my brother later, right? Yeah. Okay, we'll bug him to make cookies or fudge or something. No, he, he's really good at making fudge. So, uh, I mean, granted, it's also his son and my son's birthday party tonight. Like, all the family's getting together. So you might not have time to do that, but maybe we'll bring in, like, the leftover pizza for you guys. Uh, yeah, you guys, you can have, uh, have, have the leftovers. So, um, well, my two-year-old has his birthday on, the, it was on Saturday, and then his five-year-old had his birthday on Thursday last week, so we'll just, like, combine them together, because the two-year-old isn't old enough to care that he didn't get his own birthday party, <laughs> and if the five-year-old's old enough to care, too bad, you're only five, you don't get a say. So, we'll just combine them together and have, like, my parents and our families get together. And do the both at once. You did. You didn't have birthday parties growing up. No, I just got my cousin. Oh, okay. Well, that's happened to my kid. <laughs> oh, happy birthday! Yeah. I think that's reasonable. 
It's, yeah. You'll feel differently when you have your own kids. How, how much older is she? Yeah, yeah, that's, that's old enough to make that stick. <laughs> Too bad. <laughs> All right, so speaking of pinatas, we're going to fill up a balloon. We can imagine it's a pinata. Um, and so you've got air being pumped into the spherical balloon. Lucas, could you turn off the uh, light switch, the back light, please? Thank you. And yeah, it works. So go ahead and read the problem. What is the formula for the volume of a sphere? Four thirds. And then pi, pi is a good bet when we're talking about round things. And then r to the third. So that's that's volume of a sphere is four thirds pi r cubed. So you need that. Um, so read through the problem and look through and see what do we have in terms of information. So we have this 4.5, what is that, uh, what do we want to find, and try to just extract information so that we're turning words into just raw information that we can then plug in. So, what's our goal? What do we want to find here? So, rate of change of the radius. Find the rate of change of the radius. And so, what do we call that in, like, math variable land? So, dr, no, just dr over dt. r cubed would be the radius cubed. We don't want the radius cubed. Rate of change. We want the radius rate of change. So that's just dr dt. Prince. Um, it's not like it, it's like per minute. So it's like should be like changing the seconds. No, nah, we'll just use the units that are given. So if we're working in cubic feet, then radius is going to be in feet. If we're working in per minute, then our time is in minutes. And you hope and pray that you don't have one unit given you in like minutes and the other one in terms of seconds, because then you have to reconcile. We don't want to have to do that. Um, so that's our goal. We want to find out drdt. Then information. What what are we told? So some rate is 4.5 cubic feet per minute. What is that going to be? The rate of what? That's the rate of change of the volume. Because how do you know it's volume? It's cubic feet. So the fact that it's cubic feet, they didn't tell you the volume is changing at a rate of, they told you air is pumped into, and then the amount of air is a volume. And the fact that the units are in cubic feet is a clue, oh, this is, this is changing the volume. So what are we going to call that? What's that variable going to be? dvdt. So not just v. That would be the volume is four and a half cubic feet, period. But this is a rate, so it's got to be a d something dt. It's how the volume's changing, so that's a dv dt. Um, so that's one piece of information that we have. What's another piece of information that we have? The radius is two. So in variable land, that is r equals two. Radius is, that's it. So it's not telling you how the radius is changing. It's just telling you what the radius is, so that's just r. Uh, and I think that's all the information we've got, right? So now we go into the equation, and what do we do with it? You differentiate, because you look at your equation, and what don't we have yet? Yeah, we don't have that dr, dv, dv, dt stuff. So we need to bring the dv and dr, dt out into the open, and the way we do that is we differentiate the volume equation. So we come here, we differentiate. When you differentiate v, what do you get? dv dt. When you differentiate 4 thirds pi r cubed, what do you get? 4 pi r squared and a dr dt, because anytime you differentiate anything here, 
you're going to get a D something DT. Um, and by the way, spheres are perfectly round like circles. That's volume. If you just look at the four pi r squared, that's surface area for a sphere. So it's interesting to me how that turns out for spheres. Anyway, uh, now you can start plugging stuff in. Do we know dvdt? Yeah. yeah, all right, you plug that number in. Do you know four? I hope so. It's four. Same with pi. Uh, do you know radius? Yeah. yeah, it's two. You fill that in. And you don't know the RDT. You look at that and you say, hey, I've only got one unknown variable. I can solve that right away. I don't need to go back to my original equation and plug stuff in there. Sometimes you will. Sometimes there will be an interplay between the two equations then. But this is a nice situation. You get the derivative, you fill stuff in, and you're good to go. So I would probably clean up the uh, left side first. And by left, I mean right. Um, so what's 4 times pi times 2 squared? 16 pi. And then here's going to be where people make mistakes. If you go to your calculator anyway. Uh, you could say this is 4.5 over 16 pi, but you might look at that and says that does nothing for me. I have no idea how big that number is. Fair enough. So then you go to your calculator, and what do you need to make sure you do in your calculator when you type this in? Yeah. Please put parentheses around the 16 pi, or your calculator will give you an answer that's about 10 times too big. Because instead of really dividing by pi, you'll actually be multiplying by pi if you forget to put parentheses. So uh, make sure you put parentheses around the denominator if you're dividing by multiple things at once. And what do you get? I have zero point, and then I don't know. 0 0.085, somebody said? 89. And what's the only thing we still need on here? Units. we got to know units. So how is radius going to be measured? Feet, so this is going to be feet. How is time measured? Minutes, so this is feet per minute. So don't just think, ah, oh, it's going to be feet cubed per minute because the volume is feet cubed. No, 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 no. Radius is just a distance. That's just feet, so it's feet per minute. Right? Because that would be area. So you could, like, go another step and say, how is the surface area of the balloon changing over time? And then you would take your surface area formula for a sphere, differentiate that, and plug in this and R there, and that would be feet squared per minute. But radius or distance or side length, anything that's not area and not volume is going to be just plain old feet or plain old inches or plain old miles or whatever it is. Grace and then. I was going to ask, which I can guess, if, it, if we were solving for it. Yes. So anytime you're solving for dA or dV dt, then it's going to be feet squared or feet cubed per time. Lucas, did I see a hand up? No. Okay. Well, I mean, I did, but that's not what it was. All right. Any follow-up questions with this? All right. So let's go on to the next one. The next one is also a geometric formula problem, but it's a little more... Um, I don't know, subtle, nuanced. So go ahead and read it. And before you start, maybe helpful to write down what the geometric formula is that we'll be using. So read it for yourself and try to think about what's the information that we have, what's the goal, what can we pull out of that, words and turn into like variables and equations and then go from there. So here we got the... Uh, at a sand and gravel plant, I guess that's a thing, uh, you have sand falling off a conveyor belt, it makes a conical pile, and the sand's coming onto that as a rate of 10 cubic feet per minute, and then you have the diameter of the base is roughly three times the height of the cone. That's going to be a key piece of information when we start to solve this. Uh, we want to know the rate at which the height of the pile is changing when it's 15 feet high. So, what volume formula are we going to need? Volume of a cone. What's the volume of a cone? Pi r squared times h. So it's the same thing as a cylinder with a one-third out front. 
because a cone apparently is just a third of a cylinder. So go through, read, and we got, we want to find out what's our goal, and then also you're going to want to figure out what information do we have that we can work with. Yeah, are you not going to the man center? Oh, okay, cool. Well, that's great. Okay. All right, what's the goal? Rate of change of the height. So, what's that? PHTT. Then, information. What stuff do we know about this cone? So the diameter is three times the height. The height is currently 15. And the VDT is 10. So sand's being dumped into this pile at a rate of 10 cubic feet per minute. It doesn't come right out and say the rate of change of the volume is 10. But the units there help you figure out, oh, that is the rate of change of the volume because it's in cubic feet per minute. Um, so that's all of our information. Now, we've got this piece of information right here that's like a relationship between the diameter and the height. Now, you look at your equation, and we don't really care about diameter, do we? We care about radius. So if the diameter is three times the height, then what's the radius relative to the height? Say again? Three halves, right? So radius is half of the diameter, so just take this equation, cut it in half, and you have radius equals three halves h. And this is going to be super very important to us because it will allow us to make a substitution in our volume equation and eliminate one of our two variables uh, on the right side. So who would you like to kill, r or h? All right, so let's kill R. So let's replace R with H, which makes sense. Since we're told what the height of the pile is right now, it makes sense that we want to work in terms of H. So in order to replace R, we just take what we know about it and say, all right, let's just turn the R into a 3 halves H. So this is kind of a more subtle problem where they give us this relationship of a ratio between two of the dimensions and then you want to use that ratio to basically swap out one of your variables, and that allows you to avoid product rule. Like if we did the derivative of this thing right now, we'd have to do the product rule. And then you'd have to work with DRDT and DHDT, and that would suck. Especially because you don't have DRDT. So that would be a real pain in the neck to work with. By giving you this ratio, it allows you to avoid having to work with R at all. It allows you to rewrite the equation so that only H is involved in determining volume, and oh, I forgot the H there, then you don't have to do product rule, you don't have to worry about R or DRDT, you only care about H and DHDT now. So before you differentiate, you want to make that substitution, get rid of your radius variable, put everything in terms of H, and maybe clean this up before you differentiate. So cleaning this up, What's 3 halves h all squared? 9h squared over 4. And then clean this up again. Um, how much h-iness do we have? h cubed. And what's thir 1 third times 9 fourths? 3 fourths. So we have 3 fourths pi h cubed now. So uh, any questions with that substitution and cleanup step? that happens before we actually get to differentiation. So then this is what we really want to work with. Sub for R and then then you differentiate. 
So go ahead and take the derivative. What happens to V? dt. And what happens over here? So it's 3 times 3 fourths. 9 fourths pi a squared dh dt. Any questions up to this point with either? I guess, I mean, there's have like two steps here. First, you have to turn the diameter equals height relationship into radius equals height relationship. Then you can substitute, then clean up, then differentiate. So there's a lot of stuff going on here even before we get into the let's plug information in step. So go ahead and plug information in. And so you can solve this now the rest of the way on your own. So when we solve this, uh, anybody have an answer yet for the HDT? 0 0.006. Does anybody have that or something different than that? Anybody vote in favor of 0 0.006? Anybody want to vote against 0 0.006? Okay, we'll go with 0 0.006. And what are our units? Feet per, feet per minute, right? So this is height. Height is measured in feet, and it's a rate of change. Time is measured in minutes here, so it's feet per minute. Uh, anybody want to talk about how we got from that equation to 0 0.006? All right. Um, you want to do another one of these, like, substitution problems? I don't think I have one in the packet, so I'll have to make one up. That's fine. I'm going to make one up. So over here, uh, is there space in the back? Nah. Got space underneath. Just make, make space. So another geometry substitution example. All right, what shape should we use? Cylinder. A cylindrical. Uh, you guys know those like inflatable, what do you call them? It kind of looks like a, a punching, not a punching bag, but like a punching thing. And you can inflate them. So one of those things. A cylindrical punching thing. Yeah, yeah, the, the tubes that like all over the place. Yeah, you know, well, I already wrote punching thing, but you can run. Those things are annoying. I want to punch them, so that works. So a cylindrical punching thing is expanding at a rate um, I don't know how fast they inflate. Uh, five cubic feet per minute. The uh, much taller than they are wide. So we'll say the height is 
is eight times the radius. Find the rate of change of the height. And the height is seven feet. So you guys write down equation, write down goal, write down information. See if you can do the substitution for yourself, and you guys take over. So see how much of this you guys can do on your own. Uh, for the recording. Move, there you go. If you want me to check stuff, call me over, I'll look at it. If you have, make sure you're putting the set up right. Oh yeah, we should probably have the volume of the cylinder. Did I tell you that? <laughs> yeah. So you see the volume for a cone? A cylinder is the same thing, but without the one third. So volume for a cylinder is just pi r squared times the height. Circle base times the height of the cylinder. On your unit quiz on related rates, except for really basic things like volume of a cube or area of a square, or maybe area of a circle. Pretty much everything else. Oh, and Pythagorean theorem. I'm not going to give you Pythagorean theorem because those problems are like more of you have to build the triangle yourself and then see, oh, this is a triangle problem. But for these volume formulas for pyramid or cone or sphere or cylinder, I'll give you the volume formula for these things. Uh, just embedded within the problem. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I'm not going to give you. Um, so I'll still give you the height, and you can use that height as 8 times the radius for a uh, relationship to figure out the radius. But I've decided you'd rather find the rate of change of the radius. I'm sorry, I just ruined your whole day. This is what happens when I make up. Yes. How? So, like, would we substitute eight R in for H? But yes. Then we, but then we know H. So use over here and plug in eight for the height. So you know the height is eight R, right? Yeah. All right. The cool. Height is also seven. And you also know that the height is seven. So you can use this to then find the R value that you plug in. So this one's a little more subtle than the cone problem we just did. So you know the height in terms of radius, so you'll substitute in here for the height, okay. 8R. Um, then you know a value for the height. You can plug that in here and find out what the radius is. And now you know a value for R as well. 
Um, and then you're trying to find out DAH, no DRT. So you're given the VDT is five, right? So you're going to find out a value for R using these two pieces of information together. Your value for R right now is a fraction um, that you'll plug into your derivative equation. So then why would you have to plug in AR into the equation? Couldn't you just do 7 equals AR and then find R that way and then plug A to N to R? So like it's just an extra step if you plug in A. Well, you still want to plug in AR so that you don't have to do product. But if you find R from using those two things, yeah. then you can plug R into there and H into there. But that only gives you the volume right now. We want to find the rate of change of the radius. So let's let's do the substitution, right? So if we do the substitution, volume equals four pi. No, not pi four. I said four. Pi r squared, and the height is eight r, right? So this volume equation, before we do any derivative, is going to look like what? A pi r cubed, right? So that's our volume equation. No h is involved. So now we don't need to worry about height. We only have to worry about radius. We want to find drdt, right? That's the goal, because we want to find the rate of change in the radius. So let's bring out drdt here. What do we get when we differentiate? dvdt equals. So 24 pi r squared drdt. Start filling things in to your derivative equation. So dvdt, do we know what that is? Yeah, that's 5. 24 pi is 24 pi. Do we know r? No, but we can find it out. We'll come back to that. And drdt, do we know that? No, that, that's the goal. So we got to figure out how do, how do we put a number in there for R? That's like a short-term goal. So we come back over here and we say, well, we know that the height equals 8 times the radius, and we do know the height. We can use these things together to find out the radius. So let's say height H is 7 equals 8R. So what's your radius? 7 eighths. So that will go in there for the radius. Um, so you do need to use your volume equation. You do need, it's preferable to get things in terms of radius so that you don't have to do product rule to differentiate. Um, and then you're using this kind of height radius relationship in two ways. You're using it to substitute in for the height to disappear one of your variables out of existence. And you're using it to find out what's the radius right now, so that you have a number to plug in for R when you need to. Does that make sense? So there's, it's a little more nuanced than the one we just did um, in, in that way. But once you have that information, say, so, oh, okay, I don't need to use the given equation. I don't need to use the volume to find my radius. I can use this relationship between radius and height to find that. Did you just solve for it? I haven't solved yet. So this would be what's seven eighths squared? Forty nine over sixty four. DRDT. And then, uh, how do you guys want to go about solving that? The calculator. The calculator seems a good way. Uh, Prince, do you have an answer? Point zero eight six. Okay, if you if you say point zero eight six and I pay say point zero eight seven, it's a round. I put, that's, that's put uh, point zero seven six. Oh, you got point zero seven six. Yeah. Oh, that's significantly different. Oh, 
right, so 0 0.086 versus 0 0.076. Other people got 0 0.086. Sounds like you're getting outvoted, Grace. Yeah. Sorry. Math is mostly democratic, so. Um, so, maybe if we come back here, what, what's 24 times 49? <laughs> Let's consolidate this on the one root fraction. What is it? 147 over. So 147 over 8 pi. Oh, because you could reduce 24 over 64. I see. All right. So then you multiply by the reciprocal. 8 times 5 is 40. So you have 40 over 147 pi. And just make sure you put 147 over pi in parentheses. So you're dividing by the entire thing and not just the 147. And is that 0 0.086? Yeah. Okay. Um, what are the units? Feet per minute. That's feet per second. That is really fast. Those five cubic feet every second getting pumped into that thing is a, it's, it's a lot. Um, so what's trickier here, again, is kind of how do we use the height value and the height radius relationship uh, in here, we have to do the substitution, but then we also have to use this stuff to find the radius at this time. So, like, this is its own equation that you can use and don't be afraid to if you need to. Uh, any other comments or questions with this? All right, let's do. One more of these volume problems, and then uh, I think tomorrow we'll start getting into other kind of problems involving like distance, uh, and that's going to get us more into triangles and stuff. So back to the packet, and we're looking at the swimming pool problem. This is one where it might be helpful to try to draw a picture. But drawing a picture, this is going to be a little bit tough because it's kind of three-dimensional. Point zero point. Oh, I don't know. So it's times pi times seven eighths, not squaring seven eighths. Yeah, twenty four times pi times seven eighths. But the R squared, so you want to just have square. So then do 5 divided by all that, and see what you get. You got it now? That's 0 0.017. I think mine just might be in the wrong order. They never changed it or anything. I have a little concern about that. Oh, because you did. OK, so you did 5 times the answer. I know. And then you did 5 divided by the answer, but now it's in the answer is 288. So let's do 5 divided by 57.767. Okay. Hey! <laughs> Calculator's just a pain, but it's so much better than the alternative. So you got your swimming pool, and it's 12 meters long, it's 6 meters wide, and then if you've ever been at one of these big pools, you have like the shallow end, and then it gets to the deep end where, you know, it's deeper. And we'll assume that from the shallow end to the deep end is just uh, like a constant decline. So you just, it's a regular slope. So water is getting pumped into the pool at a quarter of a cubic meter per minute. And currently, there's one meter of water down at the deep end of the pool. So to help visualize with that, see if you can try to draw a picture of a swimming pool. I would recommend just do it from like a cross-sectional point of view. So what I mean is don't worry so much about the six meters wide. Think about it's 12 meters long, and then you have one meter deep at the shallow end and three meters deep at the deep end. And then you just know in your head the six meters wide is like it extends six meters back into the page. So you don't see like that third, six, the width dimension in your drawing.
Say that again. Yeah, kind of. But at the shallow end, because it's one meter deep, you should have like a, a height. Yeah. So there should be. Like a yeah. So you have one meter and then three meters and then kind of going down like that. Right? So uh, what kind of triangle did you say it is? A janky. A janky. Yeah, like Janky? Janky. Jan janky. Janky. I've never. Is this a new thing? No. <laughs> like it's funky. Yeah. It's new to me. <laughs> I'm old. All right. So John is John is no longer a thing, but now now janky is. It, that, no, that's not. It's not. It's not I know. I know they have nothing to do with each other. It's I realize not John is. Popular word. It's just something. But it's not like you just made up this term. No, no, no. It's a real word. It's, it's a real thing. Yeah. Yeah. It's been a real thing for a very long time. Is it? Like, real quick. Vote. Janky. Real thing for a long time? Where have I been? Yeah. Is this like, did this start when you guys were in elementary school? And so, like, it's been a real thing for you guys, but it's like, the term is growing up with you. I'm, I'm very upset. So. I know. Here, so we got we got our swimming pool, and currently there's a meter of water in the deep end. So if you go all the way out to the deep end, I'll get my uh, not quite blue marker, and we have a meter of water right here. So this is one meter of water, and in, in, in has purple water. Why is it deeper than as long? Not drawn to scale. And <laughs> you have 12 meters going long ways. It's six meters back into the page. That's our width. And then I see the issue. Yeah. yeah. This is three meters. <laughs> and this is one meter. And if you don't like my, uh, my scaling, <laughs> too bad. So, um, what um, dimension are we measuring here with water? Triangle is not a dimension, it's a shape. So first of all, is this really a triangle? No, it's not. All right, first of all, not a triangle, janky triangle. Second, um, triangle is not a dimension. No, but doesn't the water make a triangle? The triangle, yeah. Good point. But it's also triangular. Um, this one's tougher, so we might, we might, I might stall long enough so that we return to this tomorrow. Uh, we'll see. <laughs> so what's what's the volume of the water? All the water, or just the water? Well, the, the is the water in the shallow end, or? Well, there is no water in the shallow end. Oh, it didn't. It hasn't gotten deep enough yet. So the volume of the water in terms of like an equation. So what could you call like this right here? H, okay, it's a good name for it. And what could you call uh, this? The, the L, all right. And then what do you call going back into the page? The W. The W. And What's that the volume of that formula there? Length times width times height. Uh, yeah, like a cube, like a rectangular prism, which we can pretend is a cube, more or less. Uh, is that going to be a rectangular prism? No. No. What kind of prism is it going to be? Triangular. So, what's the volume for a triangle? One half. So, what is a triangle is half of a rectangle? You want? I'm gonna blow your minds here. So you see how? <laughs> wow! Two triangles make a rectangle. Uh, look at that. You see, I just completed the. Re oh my goodness! Is there anything? That looks more like a square. So, <laughs> so what variables are changing over time of the water? So as you fill up the pool and the water level gets higher, does the length change? Yeah, because this side is fixed, but 
this edge of the water is going to creep up on a diagonal and get farther up into the shallowing. So the length is changing. Length is really a variable. Is the height a variable? Yeah, obviously. Is the width a variable? No. 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 This is fine. I like your yeah, no, maybe. No. So why, those of you who say it's not, why is the width not a variable? Yeah. So the water is going six feet wide back into the page and always six feet back into the page. So as you continue to fill up the pool, the width is always six feet wide. Um, so this is not a variable, the W. So I'm going to rewrite this and say this is always 6. So that's a constant. So our volume for the water is really 1 half of 6. I like to call that 3 <laughs> times the length times the height. So that's a volume formula for the water. Now, all of that is just putting together an equation. You see why I wanted to maybe stall on this and come back to it? This is tough. But we can do this. All right, information, goal. What's the goal? The rate of the water level rising. The water level is another fancy word for the height. So we're trying to find D, H, D, T. Information. What do we know? A lot of things. We know a lot of things. The length is still, now is that the length of the water? No, that's the length of the whole pool. And what else do we know? It's one meter deep. Now that's the, the, the deepness of the water right now, but also the deepness of the shallow end. So we could say this is also, they have one meter on the shallow end, and then the rest of this is two meters to make the whole three meter deeps in the um, deep end. So that's going to give us like a ratio of relationship similar to H equals 8R in the uh, cylinder problem over there. And then we got 0.25 cubic meters. So what's that measuring? DVDT, so that's DVDT is 0.25, and we had for the water, the ratio of the height of the water to the length of the water is going to match the height of this triangle to the length of this triangle. So the height to the length, what's the height of the triangle, and what's the length of the triangle? 12. So we could say length to height equals 12 to 2, right? So uh, all of this stuff here, those first two sentences, the width, the 6 meters wide is pretty much irrelevant other than giving us a number for the width dimension, but that's always the same. But all this other stuff, you're a little bit early out of line. All this other stuff is giving you this relationship of length to height. Um, and we, you really got to be careful with is the one meter up top here, you kind of take that away and gives you two meters for the height of the rest of the pool underneath the shallow end. So who do you want to get rid of? Uh, I guess we want to find out the H to T, right? So we got to get rid of L, right? Oh, also we know that the height of the water right now is one foot or one meter, whatever it is. It's one. So we want to get L gotten rid of. So let's isolate L. Uh, so L equals multiply H over and 12 divided by 2 is 6. So that's our other piece of information. That gives us a length to height relationship. And now we can come down in here and say let's get rid of L and this is 3 times 6h times h, which is really 18h squared, right? At this point, 
it should be relatively straightforward. Differentiate, plug in number for H, plug in number for DBDT, and solve. Um, the trick is getting to this point where you have a volume equation in terms of the height. Any questions with anything up to this point? I think this is harder than anything on the homework. Um, so you differentiate, what's dv dt equal? H D H T. Fill in information. You got 0.25 times 36 times 1 times D H D T. So what's 0.25 divided by 36? Zero point zero zero seven. And units are six seven. All right. Point two five divided by thirty six. Point zero zero six nine. That'll that'll do it. All right. And units are what meters for the heights and meters per minute. So I stole this problem from the textbook, but. It's an, oh, it's an odd problem. Let me check the back of the book real quick. Did I steer you all wrong? All right, so it's chapter 2.5, number 23, 2.6. What's 1 over 1.4? Woohoo! Same thing. So we did it. That's right. Yay! We're all geniuses. Uh, this one's really tough. The ones in the homework, I don't think quite as tough. Do some of the homework tonight. Don't do all of it. You're not ready for all of it, but you're ready for a lot of it at this point. We'll come back to this tomorrow. Keep on working on this related rate stuff. We'll be doing this all week. Ryan. How do you know there's a relationship between the length and the length? Because the overall cool is fixed. So the water is going to fill up the pool uh, and the ratio of the dimensions of the water is going to match the ratio of the dimensions of the pool. I have a proposition. Mm -hmm. so I'll do a four-year view. Last semester I got an 85. Okay. This semester, right now, I'm having 94. So you need an A in each marking period separately. No, it does. Let me explain it to you. Uh, I, I understand how averages work. <laughs> but let me give you the pros. Oh, I know. Fewer, fewer finals to grade. Yeah. But I want everybody to take finals because I want the data point for everybody. Now, I know not everybody's going to take it. My, my preference would be for everybody to take it and then me to exempt people and only count it if you're exempt if you improve your average. So if you have any average and you do so well in the final that you've got to be better I would count it and otherwise I'd exempt it. I would prefer that everybody take it. Okay, so if I do really bad on the final, I'd rather the kids... Oh, then you're not exempt from the final because you have an 85. So. Do Girl, I'm gonna start yelling. <laughs> I'm terrible. Right, no, no harm in asking. She's like, she's yeah. Uh, so if you're asking the same thing straight up. Okay. I can teach better. Yeah. What do you have? Like? I, was like, I have more. It's not like I have more experience, but I do have more experience. Oh, you guys, you also have physics? So I, I know you probably told me. So you and Chris and Parnor and. No, no, no. They got eight. Oh, you were just eight. Oh, you just. Oh, I didn't know who taught honors. And you think I do? Okay. Cool. All right, that's fine. So what do you have going on for him? I'm listening. You know something's going on. Are you gonna tutor? And I'm gonna sit there and watch you tutor, and she's gonna sit there and watch you tutor and see if she can learn anything. If she can't learn, what do you do?
Okay, I like the tag. Just talk. I'm listening. Yeah, like, I'm listening. Nobody could sew an egg, and somebody was, like, and it didn't go far enough. Like, oh, yeah, it's okay. like, yeah. Like, yeah. You yeah. should have gotten up and like thrown an egg. No, no, I was the one holding the egg. Oh, you were the other sheet guy. Well, at least you know in that class we're safe from getting into baseball. Can you believe it? I don't know. The first slide is okay. This is just pathetic. Just absolutely pathetic. Somebody can't throw an egg at a sheet. Can I come to the class and talk about my test? Yeah. Thank you. And I was supposed to print something out for you, right? Oh, no, you, you said you were going to find it. Okay. Did you? Can you send me a picture of it and I'll get my hand What is it? Um, can you send me an email reminding me what I should send you? I don't have to send you? So you, you, you have the email. So, okay. So, cool. Mr. Edgar. Yes, sir. Good morning. And... Uh, Kuber is at the Men's Center? Yes. He emailed me this morning, so I got that. He emailed you? And I also, yeah, he emailed me saying, by the way, I'll be at the Men's Center Monday, Tuesday. He told me to tell you too, but okay. Yeah, so he's, he's, he's done a good job of covering all his bases. Okay. Let's see, this thing. It was so bad. I... Here's so much of Peterkin too, at, at this point. Okay. Um... Mm -hmm. Taz, um, I don't know. What is the grade right now? I don't 